you guys and gals. Welcome back to my show, Coffee with Lisa. So excited to have you here. You truly are in the people business when it comes to building long-term relationships with clients. It's very similar to building long-term friendships. Learning to make people feel important and cared about will help you build relationships and maintain those relationships long term. Hi Facebook, welcome. So today I have two very special guests with me. I have the sales legend and sales guru, Mr. Tom Hopkins. And I have the founder of the National Association of Women Sales Professionals, Cynthia Barnes, with me today. Welcome, both of you. Well, welcome to you for letting us come on your show. We're thrilled. Absolutely. So for those of you who have not met me, my name is Lisa Patrick, and I work with lovely experts like Cynthia and Tom on a regular basis, helping them position their courseware and their expertise to a number of professional audiences across the globe. So I have a question for you, Tom. What is the number one secret and mistake in sales that not only women, but any professional makes and they don't have to be a sales person to make those mistakes and, and know that secret. Well, let me start off by saying that there's more than one mistake that people make and there's also more secrets than just one. But I thought I would go through all my ideas on that and thought that the main secret is to work harder on yourself than just one. But I thought I would go through all my ideas on that and thought, the, the main secret. Now, I just had something repeat, Lisa, on me. Yeah, I, I fixed it. We're good. Okay. But I think the main secret is to work harder on yourself than you do on your job to become a person that people like, trust, and want to listen to. Because I really totally believe that if we were to put all the people together and have them sit down with their presentations, the people that do the best have this ability to create a rapport more rapidly, to bring down the defense barriers of the person they're talking with, to a, a create a desire to own the benefits of what you're offering. And so that would be the first secret that I would work on. Work on your temperament, your personality, the way you come across to become a person that they like and trust. And the way you learn to do this is by watching other top producers in your organization. Because whoever's doing the best, both income and number of transactions, they're saying and doing the right things. So one thing about life is you can copy the great ones and thus be on your way to becoming one. Absolutely. So that's the first secret. Now, the biggest mistake I think that most people make is they come across too much like a stereotypical salesperson. See, it's amazing in our wonderful country of free enterprise of capitalism that it's built on selling and the foundation of our country is profits to companies through sales. But the challenge is the average American doesn't really like the thought of being sold, although we're the greatest consuming nation in the world, they also don't like you to come across that you're trying to sell them. So it's a real fine nuance to where you come across as a wonderful, nice person, but you're not like the typical salesperson. In other words, you don't talk and tell as much as you ask and listen. Because if you ask and listen, you'll find out what you need to know to help them say yes to your offering. But if you're talking and telling, they will not stay focused with you. Absolutely. And trust is, is the foundation to any relationship, whether it be a sales relationship, a business relationship. Wouldn't you agree, Cynthia? I would, yes. Um, know, like, and trust. You, you don't do business with people that you don't know, like, and trust. Yeah, absolutely. Exactly. And, and it's funny because I've had several conversations over the last couple weeks with professionals um, uh, that I've connected with on LinkedIn. And, and one of the big things that, that seems to be a consistency with everybody that I'm talking to is people are so busy 
pushing what they have as opposed to wanting to build those relationships. And that's what they see in the LinkedIn a lot, and especially in the messenger, is everybody's pushing, connect with me so I can sell you something, instead of connect with me because I want to build a relationship with you first. Yes. Totally agree. Yes, sir. Most of my selling for my eight years in real estate, almost all my buyers and sellers became friends, and we had a wonderful long-term relationship. And that's what I think people need to work on. And we also have to realize that the average consumer has so much intelligence more than they used to have. They have access not only to the internet, but they can do more research than most people. And they walk in to see you and they have as much knowledge or more than you do. So you really have to be sharp today. Yeah, absolutely. So that brings me to my next question for Cynthia. So what is the number one fear that women face in sales? I speak to women in my association on a daily basis, and the, uh, overwhelmingly, the top concern is, how do I maintain my assertiveness without being called aggressive or pushy? And, and Tom, what would you say would be the best advice for a woman who's always being told that she's aggressive or she's pushy? Work on becoming a master asker, not a talker and a teller. And if you will come across in the very beginning with humility, with sincerity, with a desire to serve and not sell, and when they feel this because of the way you come across, what you say in the opening, uh, how you relax them with your presence, all these are the little keys that I find create that long-term relationship and I don't care what the product or service, people that seem to be at the top have this ability to tune in with people by asking them lots of questions and being willing to give up control of the conversation by really being an effective listener more than a talker. Absolutely. And it's really, people love to talk about themselves. So asking the right question uh, is a will be a lot will give lots to become a long way to build that relationship and finding out what they need and when you give them what they need that's what establishes trust well yes. and i also I, I also think lisa and Cynthia, that one of the things i try to do is relax them by letting them know in the very beginning that what we're here to talk about may not be right for you it's mm -hmm. not right for everyone so in the beginning, I'd like you to just relax. I love what I do. I love serving people with our wonder of the benefits of what we offer. But please, it's okay if you say no. So just relax and let's enjoy our time together, okay? Absolutely, absolutely. I always say, so Cynthia, I always say, it's not a no, it's just a not yet. Yes, definitely. I, yeah. I agree. So, you know, objections are a big thing in the sales cycle, if you will. And so, Tom, I want to ask you, what is the triplicate of choice for money strategy? Okay. Well, we found a phenomena after all the sales that I made. I found an interesting phenomena that people, if you give them three choices, it's amazing how 70% will take the one in the middle. And I found over the years, because it was more comfortable, not the first, not the last. So the triplicate of choice is taking either the size of the product, the number, the quantity, the color, and, and trying to give them three options. And what was amazing is when I used to say, you know, you've got three ways that we can sell your property. We can have this option, this or this, which do you think matches for you? And I was just knocked out how 70% they take the middle one. And that's why in positioning your product offering, try to find the one based on your questioning, which we've talked about, which one you can put in the middle. And that's the triplicate of choice, putting it in the middle and they'll take it 70% of the time. Wow. That's excellent. Excellent. And so, uh, would you say, Cynthia, that, that that's, some, that's a, a strategy that you've used uh, in your I, performance? I have. I have. Asking the right targeted questions in order to figure out what the prospect actually needs and how my service can 
provide what they need and then packaging it so that it becomes the obvious choice. And I love having it sandwiched in the mom's right. 70% of the time they do choose it. Yeah. Excellent. Excellent. And so would you say that most of your members that that's something that they struggle with in determining how they build that pitch of sandwiching it in the middle of the triplicate of choice? Or do you think that that's a common um, methodology for your members? Most common is women that are in the organization like to discount first. Okay. That is the immediate, that, that's the immediate um, cho choice of when in the negotiation process, their immediate response is to, well, Mr. Prospect or Ms. Prospect, let me go ahead and discount that for you because they're thinking that if they discount the price, the prospect will buy it much easier. Well, now that, that comes, which we both absolutely. And that comes to my next question. I mean, price is always uh, an objection, or as Tom, as you like to say, not an objection but a concern. And so, how do you overcome that concern, Tom? Well, first of all, I, I believe that you have to, in your questioning process, which we call qualifying, you have to kind of find what you feel they'd like best. Then I also found that if you get a minor agreement, which means maybe a small opportunity for them to say yes to something, then you're opening the buying impulse. And it's amazing how you can add on product. You can start with one agreement and move on to that, to the next and the next. But I've also learned that here's a, here's a startling truth. Most people, oh, this is a generalization. Most people can't say yes to invest in anything until they first come up with some type of no. <laughs> so in a way, no is not bad. No is just part of the process of leading them to a yes. So my concept has always been that if I'm not getting any concerns at all, I'm a little nervous because if someone doesn't have something that they object to, there's usually not a lot of interest. So why object to anything? So yeah. I always loved concerns. And I also found that if, for example, they said to me, Tom, I think it just costs too much. That's a great concern. Well, just smile and say, you know, almost everything does today. Can you tell me about how much too much you feel it might be? Now I get an amount of money. I will now help them with that amount of money, not the total investment, but with that amount of money, I'll help them rationalize. And that's a key word, the R word. That's what we do. We help people rationalize making the investment by how we handle them, what we say to them. And of course, how we handle concerns, which are objections. But the pro knows that without a no, I probably won't get a yes so come on give me the no yeah absolutely and i love that because when you handle the no it gets you that one step closer to the yes and i love the idea of and lots of times you know when faculty come on at extra credits you know they don't want everything they might only want one specific thing and then eventually they buy everything because it just is a simple solution and you build really trust doing it and so that's really important and so, Cynthia, would you say that objections are probably some of the biggest hurdles that your members face, the ladies in your organization? Yes. Yes, yes I would say that that is the, as far as the selling process, that's the one that they struggle with the most. Right. And so, I, I, now you're the founder of the National Association of Women Sales Professionals, so I would suspect that overcoming objections is probably one of the key topics of consideration on a regular basis that you help support your members with. Yes, yes. I was hoping that um, you could tell me a little bit about the, the type of training that, it, that Tom has available for my members on to access on the platform to help them with that. Oh, sure. Well, just a minute here now. I love, I love this webinar jam concept because I can share screens. So let me... If everybody would bear with me for one moment, I will pop up. Okay, so this, I think this is going to work. Let's see. Start. There we go. All right. So, uh, of course, at the NAWSP for the first time, Cynthia and I are very proud to uh, support the members and the sales professionals, and they now get online courses from Tom. And so their first course, Tom is offering them a discount to 20%. 
And so the different courses that Tom has is how to say yes when you say no and communication strategies as well as, Tom, you want to talk a little bit more about your training? Be the well, champion, I, for instance? I, we, yes, we've really tried to offer our online courses. And uh, if, if people look into what we're doing, we'll, we've really come up with an opportunity that they can almost start literally for nothing to let me teach them. And I, of course, love training. And we have so many folks that all come to us uh, via the internet and let us have an opportunity to share all the questioning skills and strategies. So uh, I think it's just a, a wonderful way to get people to have, be, have training. And uh, so I appreciate you letting them know that we do this. And if they have any interest in that, they can of course go to our uh, website, tomhopkins.com, and they can see all the stuff that we do. Uh, we have tremendous amount of 50 hours of training is what I have right now. Yeah, absolutely. And That's so pretty, pretty excited about that because uh, now uh, you've got some great access to overcome those objections that everyone talks about. Right? Right. Those, sorry, those concerns that everybody talks about. <laughs> <laughs> so what is the challenge that you're most faced with, Cynthia, at NAWSP? Leveraging um, my time and servicing all of our members. Very good, very good. And so Tom, what's your your um, strategy around time management? Well, we all have 86,400 seconds in a day. No one has any more, <laughs> no one has any less. The people that are the highest income earning people know how to preciously invest those 86,400 seconds. And they know how to set priority in their life. I think time planning and organization is one of the most important keys to a long-term successful life. Knowing how to take care of your spouse, your family, your friends, knowing how to delegate authority to others, to free you up to do what's the most productive thing possible for you based on your long-term and short-term goals. So organization in, and keeping every one of those 86,400 seconds, make them precious, invest them wisely, and you'll yeah. do so well. That's excellent advice. And I know that a lot of our members struggle with that as well, using the 168 hours a week to the fullest <laughs> and maximizing their time, being efficient and effective at, at the same time. Yeah. Well, and today's day, I mean, we have so many tools in, at, at our fingertips and so many apps and everything. And sometimes I think it's great that we have all these apps to make us more productive. But then we got to learn how to use all the apps. And so are we really being productive? That's, that's a whole other class. <laughs> it is a whole other class. So I have Tom's book here, When Buyers oh. Say No. And I've got a question from Tom's book that I'm going to ask you. So how do you keep potential clients focused on your questions? that identify their needs when they ask questions about information you plan to address later. There's, and well, there's that's, advice. That's one of the keys also. If you have a presentation that's designed to start at A into Z, where you get the yes, the check if you are getting money, it's so important that if they ask or say something before you're to the right point, you have to just say, oh, you know what? I'm glad you brought that up. And I have planned to answer that. And I, I'm, I won't forget, but I'm going to love when we get to that point. But let me go ahead and continue, if you don't mind, because I'm excited about this next point. What I, I did was called a bypass, where I bypassed handling it now, waiting until it fit into my presentation later. And if you bypass properly, you won't offend them. You won't come across as pushy. You'll do it because it's almost like saying, I'm asking you to wait, which will be better for you. And so if that's okay, let me continue. And you'll be amazed how lovely that works. Yeah. yeah. And I would think that the circle of persuasion is also <laughs> very important as well. <laughs> You know, it's so funny, Lisa, the darn circle of persuasion. We decided to do that to take a person from that darn two letter word no through all the phases on how to get it up to the yes. And of course, the circle of persuasion is a gentle, nice way 
of taking the no to a yes. And, and of course, that is about a two-hour subject. It's about 40 pages in that book, you little rascal. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, which brings me to the next is that if, if members would like to actually, just a second here, I'm going to pull up another screen. You have an offer for them. So rather than spending two hours reading the book, they should come and join you at New Jersey. Did you like my high school picture? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I have a two-day seminar in New Jersey. I'm thrilled. I, I teach eight hours each day. And uh, that's awfully nice of you to mention it. But uh, the two-day gives me a chance to really not only teach it, but have them internalize it, learn it, uh, by the time we end after the 16 hours of teaching, most of them can deliver the presentation, handle the objections, close the sale, and they make it their own, which is really key. It's got to be internalized. Can't be me, must become you. But when it's you, you'll be more successful than ever before. Good. And so I, I remember when uh, Cynthia and I were first talking about bringing you on the show, Tom, and, and for Cynthia's members, and I told Cynthia that you were going to be in New Jersey at a certain time. And, and Cynthia, what was your reaction? <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> when can I get there? When is it? I wanted all of the details. And I said, I'm going to be there anyway, so I might as well just extend my stay so that I can attend the conference. Oh, Cynthia, please let me know. Uh, give me all the details at my office in Scottsdale. Let Judy Slack know. And we will have some wonderful quality time uh, because when I go there, I just love having lunches, dinners, and sharing. And congratulations on your tremendous success. Uh, I, it'll be an honor to spend time with you, and I'm thrilled. I can't wait to see you in New Jersey. Um, <laughs> the accent just right, just right. The, the pleasure and honor is going to be mine, Mr. Hopkins. Believe that. <laughs> well, and to Judy also, Tom, uh, gave us a link. So uh, the team there has decided to give uh, Cynthia's members $250 off registration. And wow. so if you go to TomHopkins.com, N-A-W-S-P, you'll find the, the special link there for members to register to come and meet you on uh, in New Jersey. And I'm not even going to try because I'm Canadian to even remotely get the accent. <laughs> I'll just stick with my name. <laughs> One thing I will say, if the folks that are watching, if any of them are in their organization, that we will have a personal little time with Cynthia and I with them because we, there's camaraderie there. So please let us know if you're coming and Cynthia and I will dedicate some time with you. Agreed? Yeah. All right. Agreed. Agreed. Absolutely. Thank you. Another question is in this book, because, and I refer to this book lots, not only because it's a fantastic book and it, obviously it's my Bible, but there's an, when you negotiate deals, there are very strategic ways to do it. So what's the number one mistake that you would say, Tom, people make when they're negotiating? They come across, I think, a little too rapidly with what they want to accomplish. And it was mentioned by Cynthia, and I was going to jump in there a little bit too, but people discount too rapidly. I'd like them to say, if I pour on enough value in my presentation and the way I handle people, I won't have to discount. Now, the key is to have the value come across in such a way in your presentation that the people don't feel that they're investing money. They're getting money in return because of the benefits they're going to get by making the decision to make the investment. Yeah, absolutely. And Cynthia, have you got any questions for Tom? Because we're, you know, we've got about 10 minutes left and I'd love, love to, ha you know, open the floor to you. I've got a ton of questions, but the one that my membership would like to ask you if they were in the room with us, this virtual room, is do you see any differences between being sold to by a woman or being sold to by a man? Well, I will say this. A woman has a disadvantage if she has not really got the training and the strategies down. I think they had you know, the the woman has to rehearse more, has to I think come across even better than a man, and I also believe that if she does, she will far outsell a man. 
if she knows her product, if she's studied and role played and knows what to say, she will blow the consumer away with her skill level. And I, my top person in California, and this is back many years ago, her name was Rose Lane. And in all of California, this woman was the highest income real estate agent in the whole state. And she had the most gentle, beautiful way of handling people. She came across as a servant, not a salesperson. And I think that's what we have to think in, in business. We're serving, not selling. We're helping. We're helping people have a better life. We want them to benefit from every moment that they spend with us. And I think with that type of attitude, you're going to build a long-term success. And, and I really believe that a woman has a tremendous advantage with the knowledge and with the skill level over a man. But I also believe that a man will beat a woman if she isn't technically sound and has her fundamentals down. Yes, I would agree with that. I would agree with that. Great. Good. Thank you. Thank you. All right. And I was just opening the floor to uh, any questions. And, uh, and I, I think it's Jorge asked, what is the name of your book? And the book, the name of the book is When Buyers Say No. So... I and Lisa, that's the thing. I wanted to take and write a whole 300 page book on two letters, N O, because if you know what to do when buyers say no, you're going to be totally successful in sales and marketing of any product or service. And thank you so much. That is my 18th book, and I'm very proud of it. And I appreciate you giving me this wonderful presentation on it. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Well, you just released another book, did you not, if I recall? I'm sorry. Didn't you just release another book, Tom? No, no, it, it's it's coming out soon. But this is number 18, When the Buyers Say No. And uh, it's doing so well because you don't have to sell anything unless they say no. All you have to do is offer it to them. But they aren't going to take it till they give you a no that we turn into a yes. Get the check. Thank you. Let's build a long-term relationship. Well, and I always laugh because, and, and I'm sure you'll get a, a charge out of this, and I know, Cynthia, you being from the Detroit area in the car world, um, you know, Grant always says, Grant Cardone always says, you know, a no is is a yes. It's it's just the start of the process. So, absolutely. yes. Uncle right. G is one of my favorites. Sorry, what was that, Cynthia? Uncle Grant, Uncle G is one of my favorites. Yeah, me too. Yeah, yeah. Well, and Tom, you were on uh, one of uh, Grant's shows as well. And for those of you who don't know, uh, Grant joins Tom at the faculty here at Extra Credits. You can get online training again, um, all in one portal. So on demand at any time. Having said that, uh, do you have any last questions, Cynthia, for Tom before we leave? I think I'm. Um, he's answered all of the, the ones that were burning for me. And I thank you for that. I think I'm going to hold them and the rest of them in reserve for New Jersey. Very oh, good. Yeah. Uh, between now and then, Cynthia, make notes on anything that comes up because uh, nothing is more exciting than delving into questions, coming up with solutions and coming up with answers. And I would want to give these to you and take them to your whole group. Because it's okay. obvious you built a tremendous organization, and I am flattered to be possible uh, helping your folks even do better than they do now. That's that's very kind of you, and we will welcome that help because the more brains we have working together, the better. Well, there is yeah. an I in team, right? Exactly. Uh, Jorge right. has another question. Uh, Tom, this is for you. I'm new on selling. Which books of yours should I start to read first? The first book I wrote was called How to Master the Art of Selling. And that book has, has been out for many years, but it's the foundations. It's got all the fundamentals of the art of selling anything. Uh, the Buyer Says No book, the, the 18th book, it's more for a person who's been around and is having a challenge getting to the yes, but I would hardly suggest how to Master the Art of Selling was my first book. And uh, you can get that, of course, uh, from Amazon or from our company in Tom Hopkins International. But that's where I would start. I think you'll love the fact I've suggested it to you. And would anybody, uh, so I'm just 
we've got several people on the line right now, so I want to make sure that there's a there's any last minute questions that you you know write it down in the feed right now on Facebook, and we'll answer it accordingly. Of course, we're going to pre record this is pre recorded, and so it will come back again um, after it goes to video production. It'll be on Tom's feed and Cynthia's as well as mine and the extra credits page. So if you've missed it or you're watching it and you want to play back, there'll be that opportunity as well. So any last comments before we leave? Uh, just dedicate yourself to sh giving and serving others. And if you help enough people get what they want, you'll get everything in life you want. Very good. It's yes. a wonderful way to close. Well, thank you very much for the two of you. Cynthia, you're all the way in Barcelona, Spain right now. So she's just launched a whole new division there for the NAWSP. So fantastic. Congratulations. Hopefully you'll come to Canada soon. And yes. Thanks again, Tom. Good luck in New Jersey. And uh, you hopefully you'll come to Canada soon, too. Anyways, bye for now, you guys. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Cynthia. Thank you, See Mr. You. Hopper. Okay. Sounds good. I can't wait. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.